Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to take the time to seek to explain to you how to go about marking the EDPM portfolio. So your students have submitted their work and it now needs to be marked. What do you do as a teacher? Before me I have the mark scheme or the cxe mark scheme for the edpm portfolio i would have typed it like this you know for me to use to mark mine but you can tailor it however you see fit but to ensure that the content is still there so i have the candidate name the registration number so that i can know the student that this document belongs to because one is done for each student now how do you go about marking the portfolio all right, and this is oftentimes misunderstood by many teachers. And so I'm trying to take my time to see how I can explain it to you. So your student would have done their portfolio piece. I would have done a video on the portfolio checklist, and I'm going to link that so that you can get an understanding about the documents. Well, you would have known because you're the teacher, the documents that should have been a part of the portfolio. So once you get a student's portfolio, you would then go through to this section, right? The section says presentation and use of technology. So 10 pieces of documents should be in the portfolio. Now, once a student has the document, they receive one mark. And if the document is correct, they receive another mark. So basically, it is two marks for each document that is presented in the portfolio. All right, one mark to have it and another mark if it is correct. So first thing you get that portfolio, you're going to go through. Does the child have a two-page letter with a block or in there? If the child has that letter, then you're going to go here and you're going to put one mark. Then you go to the other document. Does a child have a circular letter or a form with a tear off slip? You go through. If they, they have it, you give one mark. Is there a manuscript? Yes, one mark. Is there a tabular work? No, I'm not seeing a tabular work. Zero. Does a child have a notice with an agenda, not just a notice or not just an agenda by itself? If they do, they get one mark. If they don't, they get zero. All right, is there a chairman's agenda or minister for meeting? Yes. Invitation with a menu? Yes. Right, does a child have a flow chart or organizational chart? Yes. Right, lease, I a purchase agreement or will? No, I'm not seeing one. Does a child have a contract of employment? Yes, I'm seeing one. And once you have done that, then you go through and you total how much marks we're not going to do it at the same time but when you're through but because i'm explaining this document that's why i'm doing that so once you have done that then you tally how much of the document does a student have so i'm going to check one two three four five six seven so the child has seven documents in their portfolio so total out of ten i write here seven all right let me bold that I write here seven. So the child has seven documents in the portfolio of the 10. The next thing that I'm going to do is that I'm going to check those seven documents. And I do it um, while I'm, I'm checking for the documents. They do it simultaneously. But then of the seven documents that the child has, how many of those documents are mailable? Right? Meaning how many of the documents are correct? So when you get that two-page letter, is it error free? Does it is a spacing correct? Is a capitalization correct? Is a continuation page correctly headed? If it is correctly headed, then you're going to tick it and you're going to place your signature on it and you're going to date it. If it is not correct, then you put a zero or you don't have to put any mark. All right, but you can put a zero and then you put your signature. All right, you can do that. You don't have to. Right? But a tick must be there for you to know that it is correct. Now you go through with the circular letter. If that is correct or not, you put your tick. Now you cannot give the students mark for notice and agenda and tabular work and they don't have any in the portfolio. So when we 
finish this section, you're going to go up here now to accuracy and speed. It says one mark for each of the 10, let me bold this here, of the 10 documents printed accurately. So of the seven documents that this, the child presented in the portfolio, how many of them are accurate? Right? So when I check of the seven, the child only has two documents that are error-free. The other documents may have one, two, or many errors in it. And once it has an error, it is not correct. Right? But I cannot put 10 here as I see many persons doing in the past so that the students have 10 documents correct. And when you go down here to presentation and use of technology, the child only has seven documents in the portfolio. That doesn't sound correct. All right? So of the seven documents that the child has, only two of them are correct. And that's it. So that will take out now 20 out of the 25 marks. So how are the other five marks awarded? We now move to the section known as knowledge and comprehension. Now for this section, it says description of all the components. Now when I'm teaching in my other videos, I normally show you how or show the students how to head up their page, right? In the header with the name of the document and their name, right? So the name of the document to the left and their name to the right. If I'm typing a two-page block style letter with enumeration, I'll put that in the, the header to the left and then I'll put my name, Deidre and Barrett White, to the right. So if that is properly placed on all 10 pieces of documents, then the child will receive two marks. So it's two marks for it. But if the child does not have it on all 10 pieces of document, so they have it on five to nine of the documents, then the child will receive one mark. But a child cannot receive 10 marks of all the components if they only have seven documents out of the 10 in the portfolio. So teachers, you have to be careful here. All right? You can't get 10 mark, um, full marks or something. I don't have all of it. So if they have that information on at least five to nine of the documents, then they receive one mark. If they have it on one to four of the documents, no mark for description. I've seen also where some teachers would allow the students to write about the documents. What is a two-page letter? What is the minutes? What is the... the, the, the um, the circular letter and describing all those documents and sometimes it takes up a lot of pages that is not necessary teachers right that's extra work for yourself and the students all you need is to just have that information in the header on the document because you're describing there what the document is about a two-page block style letter with enumeration a circular letter with a tear off slip right or you can further describe it a blocked style circular letter with tear off slip an indented style notice and agenda and you do that there in the header so you don't have to describe the documents because we already know what all those documents are about all right so if you have it in that manner it is two marks for all 10 pieces properly headed up if not and you only have five to eight then one mark under five no mark all right following that you are required to have a title page now please note teachers that and students that a title page is different from a cover page all right so many persons will just give the cover page edpm sba or edpm portfolio a picture and something else and then think that that can suffice it is two different things right the title page is different and i would have done in a separate video an explanation about the title page and how you can go about um, I think I gave in the video two different types of title page that you can use. So I'm going to locate that and then I'm going to try to attach it for you to get an idea of um, what the title page will look like when you're doing it. But it is totally different from the um, cover page. Okay, so if you have a title page, if the child has a title page, they get that one mark. If not, and they only have a cover page, I'm sorry, but you get nothing then you need to have your table of content. And please note that the table of content 
goes with the numbering of the page. You cannot just have a table of content and tell me that um, the circular letter is on page three. And then when I go try to locate page three, there is no number on the page for me to know which one is this um, page three to locate the circular letter. All right. So if it is that you have a table of content, then the pages must be numbered. OK, so because they go hand in hand. So whenever I'm marking a piece and they tell me that's a um, legal document and I'm looking at the lease and it says that, that on page 11, I go to page 11 to see if it's actually there. All right. So it must go hand in hand. But don't worry if you're not sure how to teach it or don't worry if you're not sure as a student how to do it. I would have done it in a video and I'm going to attach it at the end. All right. So ensure that your table of content goes along with the numbering of your page. All right. And also with the table of content, when you're numbering, um, when you're writing the information on the in the table of content, the same information that you use to head up with the description of the content on each document is the same information that should be in the table of content. What do I mean? You cannot tell me that um, in the table of content, you say um, two page block style letter with enumeration. And then on the actual blocks, um, on the actual letter, you have two page letter. No, the same information must be in the table of content and it must be on the actual document. You cannot tell me lease with endorsement. And when I go on the, on the document, I see lease. All right, they must speak the same language. All right, so if your table of content is not like that, then you can't get the mark for it. I'm sorry. All right. And next, we will look at the bibliography. Now, your bibliography should have the, the source that you get this information from. Now, for most of the information that you'll get, right, or for me, what I do is that because most of these information, the students will get them from a textbook. So you'll write that textbook source, but you must have at least a textbook source, right? And if it is that you would have gotten it from a CSEC pass paper, then you just write CSEC pass paper. And if you know the year, then you can put that as well. All right, but cannot penalize you for, for doing that. Well, I don't pen, penalize the students for doing that. All right, but the bibliography, please try also to ensure that your bibliography is in the APA format as best as you possibly can. All right, and so if your bibliography is there and it's all good, you get your one mark. So at the end of doing that, I will mark this section, and when I look, one, two. So the student would have only gotten two out of five correct all right so two out of five correct and once i'm through with that the next thing i do now is to tally this section to see how much a student would have actually received out of 25 so the person would have gotten two for accuracy and speed two for knowledge and comprehension and seven for presentation and use of technology and that will give us a total of 11 11 out of 25 and that's what the student would have received all right so teachers that is how you go about and that would be my grand total that is how you go about marking the edpm portfolio and students that's how as teachers we mark the portfolio so please ensure that you have everything there and that my well i hope that my explanation of the concept was clear and that you would have understood all right. If you did, please give the video a big thumbs up. Please comment below to let me know how you, you know, were moved by this video if you learned anything. All right. And also, please share it with someone who you think may benefit from the content. And if you have not yet subscribed to the channel, please subscribe. All right. And thank you very much for watching as I try each and every time to make EDPM simple. Goodbye.